Today on City Cash Chicago, whether you're new to the city or you've been here forever, we all need to know how to stay safe and warm when Chicago winter hits real hard. We got tips on where to find help, how to tackle travel, and keeping your sidewalks clear. Plus, we look back on some of Chicago's harshest blizzards. It's Wednesday, December 21st. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is City Cash Chicago. Let's start with the forecast. Tomorrow is when the National Weather Service is expecting the snow to start rolling in, along with huge wind gusts up to 55 miles an hour in the evening. Then as we get into the weekend, the snow will subside, but we're expecting some dangerously cold temperatures with wind chills as low as minus, uh, minus 30, y'all. Yeah, minus 30. Lead producer Carrie Shepard and producer Simone Alisea are here to share some tips to keep safe. Simone, what you got for us? Well, the first tip I have is to uh, subscribe to our Hey Chicago newsletter, uh, because that's actually where Sydney Madden, our newsletter editor, put together this great primer on kind of the storm we've got coming up. Um, You know, want to take a look at that forecast even more in depth than what we just gave you, right? Know what's coming, know when it's coming, kind of the timing of, of that wind. The thing with this storm that meteorologists are saying is that it's not so much about like the amount of snow that's expected, but those big wind gusts, those dangerously cold temperatures, um, you know, there could be power outages uh, because of this storm. And so a power outage, when it's that cold, you really want to make sure you're you're prepared. Um, Sydney also uh, put together some resources uh, for, you know, if you need help shoveling your sidewalk, if for whatever reason you can't get out and you can't shovel it yourself, um, you know, there are some organizations that will come out and bring a brigade or, you know, bring some volunteers to come help you with that. Um, it's also where we've got links and we'll put these in the show notes to, uh, to the city's warming centers. Um, if you need to find a a place to be when it's cold outside, uh, libraries are another good place to look. Um, so, uh, you know, just kind of make a plan for, for kind of how you're going to approach the next few days, uh, as the weather changes. And as we, we see these different hazards come up. Here in Chicago, we're we're a little more used to things, but it could still be a huge headache to move through it. So, Kara, I want to bring you in here because traveling is going to be a big issue this week. I've already seen articles about O'Hare preparing starting to roll through my timeline. You got some good tips for drivers in particular, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is, even in Chicago, we say this every year, we're like, do we forget how to drive in the snow? Because sometimes <laughs> it seems like people forget, right? And it can get really scary out there. Um, I might suggest, as someone who didn't drive for many years in the city, um, maybe don't, you, you know, maybe leave your car at home during these times, if you can. I understand the CTA isn't super reliable right now, but to stay off the streets as much as possible is is good. Um, don't forget also there are a lot of people walking still. There are a lot of people that still bike in the winter. So you got to watch out for them as well. Uh, there was this really great thread. Catherine Davis is a Crane Chicago business reporter. She posted something about it being her first Chicago winter with a car. And she asked for tips. And she got dozens and dozens of these really great tips, right? So we thought we should make sure we could uh, share these with with our listeners. So somebody said, watch out for the no parking signs on snow removal routes. You'll see those kind of like, you know, you see permit parking signs on the side of the street. There's like a blue on it, blue line, I think maybe a red Mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it says if the snow is, you know, X amount of inches, this is a snow removal route. So your car will get towed because we need to we need to plow right here. So watch out for those people. A lot of people (laughs) recommended that you keep a shovel, salt or sand. And this was a good one. A cardboard box in your car. So the box, the cardboard is to help like like get out of a parking spot then when you're snowed in it helps with the traction underneath your tires oh interesting i'd never heard that one before yeah that's a re- yeah that's a that's a really good one um several people said keep a portable battery charger in your car which i thought was really really smart um the you know the will cold sap that battery super yes, quick super quick and if you are you know away from home and your car's not starting 
waiting for AAA or whomever to get there is, you know, it can be really dangerous if, you know, it's really cold. Keep your car gassed up and all your fluids full. Like, I know I've been one of those. It's like, I can push it a little farther (laughs) till I can get cheaper gas. Don't do that. It's not worth it. Make sure you have gas in your car. Somebody said keep de-icer, but don't put it in your car. It will freeze. Keep it inside, next to your front door, next to your garage door, whatever you pass on your way out to your car. Grab that. That will de-ice your windshield like that, but make sure you don't leave it in the car. But mostly have a plan, you know, like have AAA, whoever your roadside assistance plan is. Um, If you're going driving out somewhere, you have to go somewhere where you don't usually go. Make sure people know where you're going. Uh, Make sure your cell phone is all charged up. That's another thing. Our cell phone batteries get sucked out when it's cold. I think that, you know, you can't really over prepare in situations like this. (laughs) You know, look out for your neighbors is another thing. Like when your neighbors, we live right across, we can see an alley we see people get stuck in that alley all the time. We run down, we help them, we shovel, help them shovel out, help your neighbors shovel out, especially older folks. Shoveling is really intense cardio. A lot of people mm-hmm. suffer cardiac arrest with it. Um, so go out and help them. And, you know, along with the cold stuff, Simone, that you were mentioning, check on your neighbors, check on your, you know, make sure everybody has stuff they need. It's community. Make, you got to look out for each other. On that cold front, too, um, you know, the other thing that's important to remember is uh, if you're a renter, there are rules uh, for how Mm. warm your apartment is supposed to be, especially if you have don't have a thermostat in your unit um, and you don't control the, the heat or the AC. Your landlord is supposed to be keeping your unit, it's something like 65, 68 degrees at least. Um, so if for some reason that's not happening, um, call 311. 311 is also where you where you call um, to find out other city resources for warming centers and things like that, uh, like moment of, day of. Any more tips for people, Simone, especially as somebody who, you know, didn't grow up with this kind of weather and has had to adjust, what would be one of your last big tips, uh, folks, before they have to bear this? I think for me, the thing I've learned the most of is like the science of how to dress warmly. Like I definitely used to be one of those people that was just like, okay, I'll just put on all of my layers kind of without thinking and, and get outside. But as it turns out, like there are, there, you can be smart about the way that you layer. The best advice I saw was in a, also in a tweet thread from somebody who um, races like does dog sled racing. Um, We'll link to that in the show notes as well. But the way she described it was like creating pockets of hot air. So you want like, you don't just want like layers and layers of like thin cotton. You want like thick woolen layers or or fleece or big down coats or a big down vest. Um, My other favorite tip is for shoes, like trying to get the bottoms of your feet way off the ground. You lose a lot of heat through the bottom of your feet and the ground is going to be really cold and frozen. So if you, if you're, you know, I always think about this when I'm looking for winter boots, like trying to find stuff that's got some, some height to it and maybe even sizing up your shoe to put in an insert that you can then take out and dry to keep your Mm. boots, you know, dry and, and warm, uh, as time goes on. And again, building in those, those kind of layers of, of hot air. Don't just do the whole hoodie coat thing. It's it, it's going to leave you just broke down. Get you some long johns. Get you some 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 long, warm undergarments. And as as uh, Baloney said, you know, layer up smart. Don't just put shirt on top of shirt on top of shirt on top of shirt. And for drivers, you know, just start breaking a little bit earlier, right? The best time to be following the speed limit, staying off of your phone, breaking a little bit earlier, and, you know, just be at least somewhat kinder to the people on the road, Uh, you know. Road rage never mixes well, but road rage and snow, oh, volatile. While the city is responsible for plowing roads, homeowners are responsible for clearing sidewalks of snow. Listener John Cahill has some tips for shoveling. Keeping a clear sidewalk makes you a good neighbor, but there's a caveat. If you shovel poorly, you had better not shovel at all. I shovel that sidewalk nakeder than Michelangelo's David. Some folks sort of skim the top and leave a layer of snow. The sun hits the snow and melts it a little. Then overnight it freezes into sheer ice. 
In these cases, it would have been better not to shovel at all. At least snow has some grip to it. Instead, you've created a skating rink, and your neighbors think poorly of you. The longer the snow sits on the sidewalk, the more folks will walk on it, compact it, and make it tough to shovel later. Don't be one of these folks who waits for the storm to end. When you shovel, it's best to gingerly remove the top layer, lifting with your legs and protecting your back. Once that's gone, violently ram the shovel at any ice that is formed at the pavement level. If that doesn't work, use the edge of your shovel, hopefully with a metal edge, and hopelessly whack that ice from the top. If all else fails, add salt. A note on salt. Use it judiciously. Use pet-friendly salt and mind the neighbor's flower beds. Salt ice, not snow. Salt is best used to break up ice so you can shovel it more easily. If it's very cold, like polar vortex cold, the only salt that works is the kind that burns dogs' feet, so just shovel better in the first place. If you have a snowblower, that's cool, but still shovel. In the spirit of being a good neighbor, you have to decide if you will shovel for your neighbors. There is no correct answer. Your neighbors might have good reasons to not shovel, but their landlord sure as hell doesn't. You have to decide whether to clear the sidewalk for them. If you decide to, be sure to grumble about the landlord under your breath. On the other hand, maybe your neighbor has a brand new snowblower and is jazzed to use it, but you come along with your Walgreens 499 rinky-dink shovel and cleared the sidewalk for them. Are you a good neighbor? Is a hot dog a sandwich? This is your sidewalk. Understand it. Ultimately, be a good neighbor and keep your sidewalk clear. If you know your neighbors need help, help them. If you're going to do a bad job, just don't do it at all. We'll hate you, but at least we won't be ice skating past your place. So, you're all stocked up, you got your shovel, your salt, your de-icer by the door, and now you're ready to just hunker down and wait out the storm. To keep you company, we asked our friend Tommy Henry from the Chicago History Podcast to tell us about two of the city's most infamous blizzards in 1979 and 2011. Leading up to the blizzard of 1979, Chicago was in the midst of its third horrible winter. 17 major storms hit during a three and a half month period. Between January 2nd and January 12th of that year, the city tied a record set in 1912 for 10 consecutive days of temperatures at zero or below. That does not include wind chill temperatures. And then the snow came. Forecasters had called for up to four inches, and by the end of the weekend on January 14th, nearly 21 inches had fallen. O'Hare Airport was closed for 96 hours, stranding passengers all around the globe. Streets were impassable. People couldn't dig out their cars, so they took the L. Then Mayor Michael Balandic assured Chicagoans that the L would continue to operate, but then ordered some trains to bypass stations, which left many riders, a large number of them in black neighborhoods, out in the cold without transportation. Tracks on the L froze, so people switched to using the CTA buses, which then quickly became overcrowded and also had trouble getting down the streets, causing super long commute times. The snow remained for 51 days. Garbage trucks couldn't get down alleys, so trash couldn't get picked up. Five people died during that storm. Of course, not all of the city's problems caused by the blizzard of 1979 can be attributed to Michael Balandic, but a month and a half later, on a bright sunny day on February 27th, 1979, Chicagoans, especially those in black communities, made their dissatisfaction with the city's inept handling of the blizzard known by voting in Balandic's mayoral challenger, which gave Chicago its first female mayor, Jane Byrne. Most listeners likely remember the 2011 storm as it had all the good nicknames, Snowpocalypse, Snowmageddon, and others. 
more than 21 inches of snow fell between January 31st and February 2nd, once again crippling the city. The CTA had trouble operating, hold for gas, leaving commuters stuck for hours. Lakeshore Drive, now called Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable Drive, became an auto graveyard when nearly 900 cars, buses, and even emergency vehicles became stuck for hours, forcing motorists to abandon their cars. Pictures made it look like a Hollywood movie, but it was all real. Then Mayor Richard M. Daly had portions of Lakeshore Drive open the very next day, but it would take crews 34 hours to untangle the mess of vehicles along the route. Eleven people died in northern Illinois, with seven of those in Chicago, including a 60-year-old man who was walking near Traversy Harbor when he was blown into Lake Michigan. Many of the other deaths were attributed to heart attacks from people shoveling that heavy, wet snow. Before I let you go, a little bit of news, y'all. The Chicago Resiliency Fund, which will give up to 6,000 Chicagoans a one-time payment of $500, has extended the application deadline to December 31st. Check the link to see if you or someone you know qualifies. Chicagoans who want to assist voters in the February election can now apply to be an election judge. The gig pays up to $230 on election day. We talked a lot about the cold today, so we might as well give you a bunch of things you could do in the crib. Sydney Madden, our newsletter writer, has a great list of drinks, movies, recipes, and Chicago fun you can enjoy from home. Check it out at chicago.citycast.fm slash newsletter. And some good news to get you through. Speaking of enjoy from home, our friend Mark Brayboy over at The Tribe has dropped his top 25 Chicago hip-hop and R&B albums of the year. Check out the list, add a few to your snowy queue, and then let me know what your favorite Chicago rapper R&B album of this year was. Shout out to Kaina, Saba, and Raven Lene. As always, I appreciate y'all for listening. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. Peace. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. <laughs>